On Saturday, New Mexico State beat rival New Mexico on the football field for the first time since 2017. The Aggies and Lobos mean a lot to the state, but so do its indigenous people who have lived in the region for hundreds of years. That history and tradition was honored at Aggie Memorial Stadium during the Battle of I-25 last night in Las Cruces. Awesome. Well, thank you, Mike, for coming up here. Maybe we can come back at halftime. English or Navajo, you don't have to be fluent in either to understand Kyler Frank. For the first time since 2013, Frank was back in the broadcast booth at Aggie Memorial Stadium on Saturday night, calling New Mexico State's 21-9 win over rival New Mexico in the Navajo language. You know, just, just being back on campus, it means, it means a great deal to me. An NMSU graduate, Frank called Aggie games in Navajo for nine years, the first person in college football history ever to do so. It expanded to include basketball, baseball, and other sports, too. 2005 is when we started. Um, September was the first game we had um, played against Cal here. That was the, the first game that we did. Frank credits former NMSU head coach Hal Mummy for first helping him get in the booth. Coach Mummy seemed really interested in it, and they pushed that idea forward for me. Saturday, he was there with his broadcast partner, Glenn King, calling the action on KCZY 107.3 for the Navajo Nation. The duo calls high school sports back home, and they've traveled as far as Wyoming to broadcast rodeo events. We always say that our language is important and that we need to, you know, have a way to carry it on, and I don't think that there's anything better than to do sports, basketball, and football to preserve that. And King is the grandson of one of three surviving Navajo code talkers, the group of men who used their language as an unbreakable code during World War II. With that in mind, he's doing his part to preserve a language currently spoken by 171,000 people. America respects them now, you know, because they, uh, the language that won the war, you know. And for us, we're trying to reach the uh, younger generation with our Navajo words. Saturday was even more special for Frank and King because of who was on the field for the Aggies. Shows Pete, 71, Sherbrooke High School. I'm from the Navajo Nation Reservation. New Mexico State has four players with Native American heritage on the roster. Two of them are from Navajo Nation. Redshirt freshman Shiaj Pete and graduate transfer JJ Jones. It's a privilege and again, it's a, it's a strong honor to represent my people. Pete went to high school in Shiprock, New Mexico on the Navajo reservation. I believe I'm the only one to go to a division one out of, that, out of my high school. Jones grew up away from the reservation, the son of an Aggie and the grandson of a Pittsburgh Steeler. Even though I lived in California, I just tried to stay as closely connected to the culture and to the actual location as I could. He played the first portion of his career in the Ivy League at Dartmouth College, then followed in his dad's footsteps to New Mexico State, which also brought him to Pete. I've pretty much been the only native person on, you know, all of my football teams. So it's it's nice to not only have another native person, but you know, someone from the same tribe and clan. Jones highlights a reality across not only college athletics, but university systems as a whole. No matter what we're doing, are we making sure that we're protecting our people? Michael Charles is an assistant professor at Cornell University and a member of Navajo Nation with a background in advocacy for the rights of indigenous people. Uh, a lot of these big diversity initiatives that have ha been happening uh, have really actually still neglected Native students and really continues to make us invisible. Data shows that Native Americans make up less than 1% of all undergraduate students, but the numbers are even more stark when it comes to athletics. In 2021, there were over 493,000 NCAA student athletes at over 1,000 schools across three divisions. Barely 2,000 of them were Native American or less than half of a percent of the student athlete population. You don't see a lot of people specifically coming to recruit at, at reservations, especially the D1 schools, the talents there, the drives there, the hard work is there. It's who, who's actually taking paying attention to us. Pete knows that from experience. He stands six foot eight, 287 pounds, but his only offer to play college football anywhere out of Shiprock High School on the Navajo reservation was to be a walk on at New Mexico State. I only get one shot and that shot has to count. So. I, I need to make it count, was kind of what I told myself. I don't think people recognize how um, tough it is to get here from where he came from, just because there's not the same opportunities that you have. In just his second season, Pete now starts on the Aggies offensive line with a former NFL lineman as his coach. The kid possesses really uncanny traits, physical traits, and just he has great length and size and, and athleticism. He brings a lot of the physical tools you want, and he's just getting better with every rep. Jones and Pete are not the first Native Americans to get their shot playing FBS football, and the number has increased over the last decade. It's all a part of increasing that visibility for everyone at all levels, 
while preserving a language and a culture for the next generation. They need to know about them. They need to hear about their about our people being in this, at this level. And of course, we have social media, but you know, um, to actually hear them in our own language as well, I think it brings another element to it. NCAA institutions aren't the only options for Native American students. As of 2020, over 15,000 students attended 35 tribal colleges and universities. Additionally, the Navajo language is now available on Rosetta Stone as the tribe looks to preserve its language and its traditions for future generations. Andy Natasio.